If you are watching this video, chances are you have already tried playing with a sniper rifle before, yet you just can't seem to outgun your opponent. How are they so good? Are they a smurf? Are they hacking? Actually, they have watched my sniper tutorial video that I made way back in the day. Granted, it is a couple years old at this point, but with all of the updates that have happened since then, it's about time for a refresher. I'm your host, Stump Daddy, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get better at playing with sniper rifles. We will talk about each weapon's stats, some tips on how to play with certain sniper rifles, and some tricks to get you hitting those shots more often. So if you like content like this, or you find yourself coming back more often, go ahead and hit that subscribe button with notifications turned on. It helps out the channel a ton, and it recommends my videos to more viewers. Or if you already subscribed and already like this kind of content, then hit the like button to show your support on this video. Let's see if we can't hit 50 likes. And with all that said, I would like to welcome all of you to the Sniper Rifle Tutorial. Let's start by taking a look at each weapon's stats, which will help us get a better understanding on how each weapon operates. Now there are two different types of snipers in this game. Bolt Action, which are the TRG-22 and the Eurasio, and Semi-Auto, which are the M14 and the SVD, also known as the Auto Snipers. Now, I also wanted to know how much damage each sniper does, since all of the snipers are one-tap headshots. So to do this, I called upon my buddy, God Icon, to stand there, look pretty, and let me shoot him in the face a couple times. We will start with the TRG-22. It costs $1,800, has 10 bullets in the clip, with 4 clips in reserve. It also boasts the fastest running speed of any weapon, second only to the knife, which makes this weapon a good choice for taking the enemy by surprise. Its damage output is 179 points of damage to the head, 73 points of damage to the body, and 56 points of damage to the arms and legs. This is definitely one of the weakest sniper rifles, but combined with its fast reload speed and running speed, you can safely take cover in between shots if you've missed the first one. It also has the tightest unscoped spread, which can be useful if you are up close and unscoped, obviously. The next weapon on this list is the infamous U-Ratio. It costs $4,000, has 10 bullets in the clip with three clips in reserve. This is no doubt the most powerful weapon in the game, boasting its 306 points of damage to the head, 221 points of damage to the body, and 95 points of damage to the arms and legs. This is the favorite choice among the players who play the sniper role, and it is easy to see why. Even if you hit the arms or legs, you can still pull out your pistol and finish them with one shot. Up next is the SVD Auto Sniper. It costs $4,200, has 10 bullets in the clip, with 3 clips in reserve. It is definitely the most powerful auto sniper, but not the most powerful in the sniper class. It can do 273 points of damage to the head, 112 points of damage to the body, and 85 points of damage to the arms and legs. And now, just because this is an auto sniper does not mean that all of its shots are precise. When holding down the fire button, the shots spread out like they would with the TRG at close range, unscrewed. Scoped. However, the spread seems to be just narrow enough to stay within the player model. So keeping the crosshair on the center of the player model should ensure two consecutive hits. Last, but certainly not least, we have the M14 Auto Sniper. It costs $4,800, has 8 bullets in the clip with 3 clips in reserve. While the M14 is the more expensive Auto Sniper and has the slowest running speed of any gun in the game, it is the fastest firing sniper and can be more precise than the SVD. Although its damage is less than the SVD, with 188 points of damage to the head, 76 points of damage to the body, and 58 points of damage to the arms and legs. Even though it is one of the weaker hitting snipers, it still one taps, which can be great for late game team rushes and defuse game modes. With each weapon having unique characteristics, it is better to know how each gun behaves, so you know how to use them within a deathmatch or ranked defuse game. Snipers are some of the most powerful weapons in any game that you will play, and with great power comes the slower fire rates. You also have to worry about the different sensitivity when scoping in with snipers, which is a percentage of your original sensitivity values. So how would you play with snipers as the Coalition or the Breach? Well, no matter what side of the map you're on, a good rule of thumb is to snipe at a distance. This is where the ostrich effect comes into play, where the closer you are to a corner, the less you can see around it. This also works inversely the further you are away from a corner. So the best places to snipe from are areas far enough away from corners or choke points where the enemy is going to come from where they don't have as much space as you do. 
In my last tips and tricks video, I have said that the best place to peek from is on the left side. So you would want to have some cover between you and the area you were scoping into. That way when the enemy is peeking a corner, it is going to be nearly impossible to see you in time for them to react. And once you take the shot, duck behind that cover so just in case that you miss, you will end up being a sitting duck. So with all that said, the best way to play with snipers on the coalition is to sit either on bomb sites or long corridors that you can get to first and try to pick off any breach players that tries to rush you. On the breach side, however, you're going to have to find an area where you can see the coalition crossing or try to catch them rotating. I would try and stay away from trying to peek into bomb sites with anything other than the TRG since everything else has a slower movement speed. And if you see a sniper on the ground, pick it up. Unless it's a TRG in the 7th round, then leave it and just buy the E-Ratio. And now that we know how to play with our sniper rifles, it is time to give you an edge over the competition. And I have just one trick that is the most effective way to play with snipers, and that is to hard scope, hard scope, hard scope. But no! I know exactly what you're going to say. You're going to say, What about quick scope and no scope? All the pro players are much greater. I don't care about quick scope and no scope because they both require luck to pull off. Well, Okay, listen, I was gonna have Kumar come on as a surprise guest to pretend to convince me that quick scoping and no scoping are not luck based, but he didn't get back to me a time to do any recording, so maybe some other time. But I don't need Kumar to tell me that quick scoping and no scoping are not luck based, because I already knew that. As far as quick scoping goes, anything less than one second counts. But in order to quick scope effectively, you need to have some experience with aiming without a crosshair, which comes with developing your game sense. Another tip I could give about quick scoping is to aim at your target before you scope in, so that way you are not scoping in mid-swipe and you miss because you fall short of your target. Now for no scoping, it really is up to the RNG guts to give you that pixel perfect shot from downrange. The main reason why some of you are missing your no scope shots is because you are all trying to do it at range like your favorite montage YouTubers. The only reason you should be unscoped is while you are running, so the best place to try a no scope is from up close and while standing still. Notice how I said try? That's because most of the time, you will come across another player wielding an assault rifle that is better suited at close range combat. And nine times out of 10, you're going to lose that engagement. The only way to get a successful no scope off is to catch your opponent by surprise or hope that they have lousy aim. And one thing that both no scoping and quick scoping have in common is that you need to make sure that you have your center of your screen lined up with the player you are trying to scope into. Because if you have it too low, you're gonna be aiming at the ground. Too high, you'll be aiming at the ceiling. Too far left or right, you'll be off. But too far left or right is fine, just as long as you're able to quickly flick back to that player. The last trick is called quick swap, or as I like to call, stumping which doesn't really roll off the tongue very well, so we'll just stick with Quick Swap. Quick Swap is where after you fire the Euratio, you tap your weapon hotbar twice in rapid succession, so you can get your next shot off faster than if otherwise. Using this technique will help you when you are up close trying to no scope or when you are quick scoping. Now this technique is only useful with the Euratio. Trying to do the same thing with the TRG will not work since the equip time is slower than its reload time. As for doing this with the auto snipers, it is not necessary since they're auto snipers. Now, if you are a player who has never played with a sniper rifle before, I hope that these tips and tricks can help you gain a better understanding on how to use the sniper rifles in critical ops. If you have already played with a sniper rifle before, I hope these tips can help you hone in on your sniper skills and develop them even further. But none of your skills will get better if you don't practice them. Even if you just play around with the snipers in deathmatch or in practice mode, just playing with them will help you build your arsenal as well as your skills with snipers. And with all that said, if you made it this far, please consider subscribing with notifications turned on or just put a like on this video. It really helps out the channel a ton and I appreciate all of your guys' support. I also have social media that I post to with links in the description. There I usually post some of my best clips from either playing offline or while streaming. But thank you guys so much for watching and as always, Stay safe. Bye-bye.